everybody. Welcome to Alienware's opening coverage of E3 2016. We are live here on Alienware TV and broadcasted on twitch.tv slash Alienware. I am your host, Lennard, Alienware Community Manager, and I'm joined by the head man at Alienware, Mr. Frank Azor. Frank. Thanks for having me, Lennard. Thank you for rushing over here. <laughs> <laughs> Frank literally just showed up, guys, about 10 minutes ago. Ah, uh, LA traffic yeah, at its Yeah, gotta love it. <laughs> Google Maps is not that accurate when it comes to how long it's gonna take you to get somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff, guys. Over the next hour, the two of us and a third member of our team will be joining to talk about all of the great new technologies that we have here at Alienware. Super excited, E3 doesn't even start till tomorrow. All kinds of coverage are gonna be coming from us, but we must start all the way at the beginning. It is 2016. This man that's sitting next to me, 20 years, 20 years he's been around, working at Alienware, was here from day one. Frank, take us back, like. Almost day one, you don't have your history oh, correct. You oh, failed the trivia. Oh. You didn't get the trivia okay, correct, actually. Okay, all right, so Frank wasn't here day 18 one. 18 years, 18 okay. years, but yeah, Alienware's uh, 20 years this year, so uh, I started with a really simple idea. Uh, not that simple to execute, but hey, a bunch of people want to play PC games that are out there. It's really complicated to get stuff to work back then, DOS and Windows and all these different pieces of hardware and everything. So Nelson and Alex um, had this idea of let's go make turnkey systems for people so they can just focus on playing their games and not have to worry about their hardware, not have to worry about their tech. Right. And wow, look at us now, yeah. you know, 20 years later. Um, so I joined as fourth employee and uh, it's been just an incredible journey yeah. um, from you know all these different products that we've developed, all these different firsts all the, the, just the fun that we've had over the last 20 years, it's been amazing. Yeah, and, and I've been around for the ride for about 10 years, and it, it, it's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, with, with that, we've, we've gone through a lot of transitions, right? So 20 years ago, 18 years ago, it was all about desktop gaming, right? Gaming notebooks didn't even exist, <laughs> right? So just to pat ourselves on the back, or I'm gonna pat Mr. Azor over here on the back, Alienware came out with the first gaming notebook, right? Yeah, first gaming notebook. We were the first to put dual graphics cards inside a gaming notebook. We did the first water-cooled desktop, believe it or not. Now you look at wow. desktops yeah. and like almost everything's water-cooled for a gaming desktop out there. So yeah, I mean, we've had a ton of firsts. We did the the 11 inch M11X. We did the first PC console just a couple years ago, right? Yeah. With the, uh, the Steam machine and the Alienware Alpha. So it, what's really cool is so many firsts and they've been part of our history and we continue to just to firsts and firsts and firsts, and maybe today we'll we'll announce a couple firsts as well. We'll see. Yeah. Mm, interesting, <laughs> interesting. So we are at a you know big transition point. There's been a lot of those in, in PC gaming. Uh, we, we just hit on a couple of them. So gaming notebooks. Uh, we went to living room PC gaming. Now VR is like the big thing, right? So. What has Alienware's experience been with VR and, and where is that taking us in the future? Well, we saw um, probably the, one of the first VR demos actually at this show about four years ago. We met with Oculus and uh, they put on a, a DK1 um, on my face and a few folks that I was with and that I brought to the meeting. And that is that was the moment where we knew, whoa, this is a revolution that's coming. Yeah. Um, and at that moment, we really started collaborating with them around how are we going to build our products so that they can complement what they were going off and that they were building. Uh, we look at VR as basically as important to our future as PC gaming has been to the past 20 years yeah. of our history. So what you've seen from us is we've launched products um, since the beginning of this year, whether it be uh, you know, new price promotions in partnership with Oculus and HTC, or it's been products that are certified with Oculus or HTC, or whether it be um, how we give our, our customers and our fans a path to VR, right? Like right. things like the Alienware graphics amplifier, you can buy that, you can plug it into an Alienware 15 or an Alienware 17 inch notebook, and you have a path to VR with that. There's nice. no other product out there in the market that has something like that. So that's a first yep. for us, right? Um, and we've been doing that now for over a year. We launched that back at CES of 2015. Um, and then even the uh, X51, right? That product, when we launched it, the R3, we, uh, we offered it with the ability to connect a graphics amplifier to it, so you can go even higher end performance. We launched 970 graphics in the X51, so you can ha have a VR certified box. And today, um, the next evolution in our VR roadmap, uh, we're really happy to announce that we are launching, uh, actually an old favorite, an old fan favorite okay. product. Uh, it's called the Aurora.
fast. Let's go, let's go. guys I am introducing a third member of our team Mr. Eddie Goyanis he is the product manager for the Alienware Aurora Eddie tell us all about your baby here man just look at this this is the new Alienware Aurora it is a mid tower gaming desktop obviously and just check it out look at the design um, this system was uh, uh, an inspiration and it's definitely something that we've all been excited about for a long long time um, our mid tower is very uh, incredible. This system is capable of dual graphics, um, but up to dual 300 watts of graphics power. That's incredible amounts of power. This system is designed for dual graphics, liquid cooled overclocking. It is designed for VR. And once I give you the whole runaround, the system was designed meticulously. There's no waste of space. It is incredible from the inside out, uh, making sure that performance is always prioritized for all gamers. So, let, let's so this isn't the first time we have an Aurora, right? right. So we kind of uh, respawned this baby, if you will. We used to offer an Aurora a long time ago, actually, and that was uh, the best in class, if you will, mid-tower you can get out there. Um, and then we went to the Area 51, and then we offered the X51 as kind of like a slim tower system. But now with VR, um, as performance demanding as it is, we felt we had to bring back the Aurora to give folks not only VR capability like the X51 does today, yeah. but a scalable experience so that as even more powerful VR headsets come out, you can upgrade your graphics over time and you can do so really, really easily. So Eddie's going to talk you through a little bit of that design consideration that we put into this product so that you can, it can scale with you as your performance demands scale. Yeah, for sure. So in terms of performance and scalability, as I mentioned, it'll support dual, up to dual 300 watts of graphics. That's 600 watts of total graphics power. Wow. And we still leave room for overclocking your processors. Those are sixth generation Intel Core i7 processors. And we're overclocking these up to 4.2 gigahertz across all four cores. So even the most demanding applications that actually take advantage of multiple core processing will get a lot of performance out of there. So another trivia question, just yeah. not, a trivia answer for those of you <laughs> that are following along. Alienware was the first company to ever hit the four gigahertz barrier, like what? 12 years ago or wow. 13 years ago yeah. or so. Nice. So just something else to keep in the back yeah. of your mind. Next time we do a trivia contest. <laughs> and the overclocking doesn't stop just there. So the system will actually also, there are options for overclockable memory. So we will actually have uh, HyperX Fury memory overclockable up to 2400 megahertz, wow. which is incredible performance. Yeah. And it keeps going. So from a storage perspective, the system will also support a PCIe SSD and multiple solid state drive uh, options as well. So we will actually be offering options with solid state drives and traditional hard drives. So you can get the best of both worlds, performance and upgradability, performance and storage. Nice, so before, because I know all you guys out there that are tuned in, you're like, wow, the thing looks sexy, but let's see the inside. We're definitely gonna show you guys the inside of this product uh, and show you all of the great mechanical and quality designs that we do here at Alienware but I want to spend a second and nerd out on, on the exterior, right? So the side panels, the lighting, all of that technology that you know you're going to get from Alienware, the inspiration, it looks very similar to our current line of Alienware laptops, our Area 51. I'm going to go ahead and say that that was done on purpose. Can you give <laughs> us a little backstory behind that? For sure. So this, this system is definitely inspired behind a lot of the design, design decisions that we made with the Area 51. So for example, this system has a very familiar grip up here, right? So this grip up here will allow you to actually carry, hold the system, you can actually tip it forward if you ever want to access the rear ports. Um, and so it's very, very handy. The ergonomics in the machine are something that we definitely took into consideration. And it's not just for this grip by itself, but getting into the system is very, very easy too. We wanted to make sure that anyone wanting to get in would have no issues and not have any uh, uh, concerns that they're going to break something. So check out how easy it is to get inside. So let's, let's turn it to the camera so those guys can see the machine that for sure. This way. Yes, yeah. sir. So, yeah. so getting in is quite simple. You just there we go. Pull this latch, and the door comes off. Real, real simple. Just like that. You saw that. No tools. No concerns. No weird mo motions or movements. Um, anyone could get into this machine 
perform their own upgrades without voiding their warranty, um, and show off to their friends. Well, now that you opened it, we're going to turn it off. Yeah. So you don't uh, get electrocuted <laughs> on stage here. Right. Good. <laughs> good idea. Good idea. Although our VOD views would be off the charts, <laughs> I, right. I'm not ready to sacrifice. But let me plug it back yes. in. Yeah, you need some special <laughs> effects so that I could, you know, you can see the skeleton in and out. Awesome. So uh, the rear ports. What, what do we have here? Oh, man, there's a ton. So actually, if you count front and rear, there's 15 USB ports. Um, and that's a mix Damn. of, you know, 2.0, 3.0, 3.1. There's even a Type-C port in the back as well. Um, and the machine lets you have a 7.1 high H HD audio. Um, and we even have a coax and an optical output as well. So if you want to have a receiver and output that incredible, you know, music or gaming uh, experience through a high-performance theater, you could do that too. So tons of ports. Um, for anything you want to throw at it. And then even still room for expansion, as you can see on the back. Um, as you get into it, check it out. On the side, you'll notice um, we didn't really waste any space. This machine is very dense. Um, towards the bottom, you have your graphics cards. And to the very bottom, you have two two and a half inch hard drives. On this top right, you could actually have a three and a half inch drive. Or if you get an adapter, you could have two more solid state drives. That's four total storage drives so far. And then inside, along the motherboard, you get, there's, a, there's a, a slot for an M.2 PCIe. So tons of storage in there. So let, let's talk yep. a little bit about the Alienware like, uh, thought process behind upgrades, sustainability, and all of that, right? So awesome. There's going to be other products that we offer, other products that are on the market, things that you could build yourself that are going to allow you to have an Intel processor, right? Have dual graphics capability. Have four hard drives, right? But the design features and things that we think about are how easy is it to make those changes, right? So we, we throw around a, uh, a term internally called like toolless upgradability, right? <laughs> That's so right. What are the things that we can do? With, sure. Like we're going inside, guys, and there's no screws. There's no screwdrivers, right? So how far can we go without actually having to touch anything? Yeah, sure. So um, I just mentioned all the storage drives. Those are all toolessly upgradable. And although we don't have a drive here, let me show you how simple it is. This caddy comes out, and you can pop it back in, and your, your drive can fit right in there. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do I get to the graphics cards? Well, this is really cool. So we actually developed and engineered a PSU swing arm that once I release these latches, and there's a bit. Yeah, oh. a retention mechanism. Oh, there's a retention mechanism. <laughs> That is a graphics card retention mechanism. So that we put this in here so that uh, when it's shipping, it's hard to take it off from this angle. When it's shipping, yeah. it won't actually get damaged. Go ahead, you can open it up. So a lot of the, okay, here we go. There you go. Yeah, a lot of our engineering samples didn't carry that, so we've been playing around with it on and off. But this, this actual, this, this little piece of plastic right here will hold your cards to make sure that they're fastened, fastened and secured inside to reduce any vibrations when it's in shipping. So that's really important. Yeah, once you receive it and you want to swap it out, you don't have to reinstall this unless you're going to ship it. You'll notice that I, I, I actually swung out this, uh, this whole assembly. It carries our power supply, and that's available in a 460 watt and 850 watt power supply option. Ooh. Both of those afford you uh, some uh, multi-GPU options. So even with the base power supply, you can get um, NVIDIA or AMD dual graphics options on your system. Now, since we're talking about graphics, if you look along the side, there actually aren't any screws in here. This is our first desktop to actually allow toolless graphics upgrades. So there's no thumb screw. I don't need a screwdriver. All of the all of the cards that you put on this expand on these expansion bays can be removed without any tools, and that's really really cool. So and what then, holds them? This assembly here holds them in place, right? That's right. And then you've yeah. got a latch that secures it in place when you close the assembly to make sure that they're not going to move anywhere. Yep, for sure. Um, and then as we look inside, of course, memory is uh, you know toolessly upgradable. Um, and that, that right there, as you notice, um, has a whole list of upgradable parts without tools. Notice how easy it is to get in. Notice how much room you have to work. If you like to tweak systems, if you like to perform your own upgrades, um, if you have a certain budget in mind and in the future you want to perform more upgrades, know this, that you could actually get in um, with confidence, without voiding your warranty, um, without a, a need for special tools, and still be able to get in and, and upgrade the performance of your system. So, the new Aurora actually offers a ton of performance uh, experiences. So you could actually get a single graphics card, you can get an i3, all the way to an overclock processor, all the way to dual 1070 or even 1080 graphics. 
which is incredible amounts of performance for the system. So if you think about the value, right? We haven't even told you what the price point of this thing is going to be. Um, but if you think about getting into VR today is a little bit of an expensive proposition, right? You have right. to buy a headset that can be either between $600 or $900 or $800, sorry. Um, so that's a big investment up front. You know, you may want to get like a min-spec piece of hardware today. Right. And while most companies will go in, you know, and kind of lock you out from being able to upgrade that so that, you know, you can come back to them and buy another machine in the future, we've gone a completely different approach, right? We want this machine to be a part of your life for a decade, if not longer. So okay. when you're ready to go maybe to the next level, when next generation VR headsets come out, they're going to drive even higher resolution, um, or we get to 4K gaming, you want to get to 4K gaming, for example, maybe even 8K gaming, this product will be with you th through that entire journey. Awesome. So, we're showing you guys all the features, we're showing you all the functions. When is this baby going to be available? So, you'll be able to get it tomorrow uh, in the U.S., starting at a 799 price point with an Intel Core i3 processor. 799? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, nice. Yep, nice. yep. With an Intel Core i3 with an NVIDIA GeForce 950 graphics card. Um, and did I mention eight gigs of DDR4 memory? That's right. So um, tons of great options right off the bat from the starting at price point, um, and tons of upgradable options too. So as you can see inside, we actually have a liquid cooled processor. That's a very low profile uh, uh, whole assembly. So when we close this, none of the hoses are, are in trouble. There's actually a fan on the top of the system that serves as an exhaust. So when I put the, the, the lid back on, I'll show you guys how the airflow travels through this system. But you have a liquid cooled processor. It starts at an, uh, with an i3 at 799. Okay. There's an i5 option, and there's even an i7K option that goes up to 4.2 gigahertz, as I mentioned earlier. So, so two, uh, two things that are my favorite things about this product that I want to make sure everyone understands. Number one, it's, you're, not gonna, you're gonna have to take our word for it now, but you'll see when the reviews come out how quiet this machine is. Yeah. We have an ultra low quiet mode, and even under load, it's amazing the thermal design that our engineers put into this product. Yeah. The only way I can tell when this thing is running, when it's in my house, is by looking at the lights being turned yeah. on. I yeah. can't hear it. I've never had a desktop this quiet before. It's remarkable. Um, and number two, the entry VR configuration today in the industry and for the X51, that's a configuration that costs $1,199. With this new Aurora, we're bringing the price of that down by $100. So you'll be able to get into VR for $1,099 before any promotions or discounts or anything else out there. Nice. So that's a $100 price improvement in getting into VR. Just again, another way that we're demonstrating our commitment to VR and proliferating VR out there. That is awesome, Yeah. that is awesome. You mentioned how quiet it is. So the system actually supports what's called Intel Ready Mode. Um, and that's actually a great feature that allows your system to run extremely quiet with all the components running at minimum power so the system is actually not completely asleep. And the benefit there is that when you sit, when you come back to your system, it'll be immediately available. Um, background applications will be constantly updated. Um, and it's at a whisper, whisper, quiet type of operating mode. Yeah, and it consumes really, cool. really, really low power too. It's almost like being in sleep mode, except it's still aware and getting your email and your social media updates and yeah. all like the basic little updates that you want the machine to have. So when you turn it on, um, or it's already on, but when you resume from sleep, if you will, this ready mode, you're not downloading a bunch of updates at once or anything, it's already there. Everything's uh, updated for you. So, gives you just a better boot and resume experience. Yep, sure. Very cool. Well, so, this is the first of many, many announcements that we've got with new Alienware Technologies today. Um, we talked about, let's talk about a little bit more about the capabilities, right? So, there's a whole lot of versatility with PC gaming. We've touched on 4K, We've touched on this product being able to scale to 8K and beyond, 12K, hopefully yep. sometime really soon in the future, um, will be a standard uh, in gaming. Uh, VR is where we are today, right? So now you have this experience of traditional PC gaming, three foot, I'm at my mouse, I have my keyboard, I'm ready to game. Uh, about, I'm probably gonna get the date wrong because I'm terrible <laughs> at keeping dates, but let's say four years ago, four years ago, we actively announced a new product category, the Alienware Alpha, maybe three years ago. Uh, two years ago. Two years ago, okay. Well, we'll we showed it off at CES 2014, <laughs> Told you bad two and a half years ago. But and we Alien, launched it at E3. Alienware started this journey before I was a part of it. So over 10 years ago, let's say 12 years ago, the uh, 
PC moving into the living room, right? Uh, there was a, a code name project, Alienware Hangar, right? Um, what, is that still something we're committed to? Yeah, you know, a lot's changed in the market. I mean, 12 years ago when we were doing uh, digital home systems, if you will, we were still getting the majority of our uh, content, our TV shows and our movies, either on DVDs, if you remember what those yeah. are, um, <laughs> or uh, we were actually getting What's it that? through a TV tuner, you know? Right, yeah, and oh you, gosh. You I fast forward TV to where to we are today, yeah. <laughs> and we live in a world of all, most of our content, if not all in some cases, is coming in over the internet, you know, through yep. services out there, maybe Netflix, Hulu, so on and so forth. So we are absolutely as committed as we were back then, um, but this time things are a lot different. Um, it's a much easier experience. We have much better operating systems to work with. Um, we're able to deliver incredible performance at these price points and in these sizes that just weren't possible right. 12 years ago. But you know what's the same are the lessons we've learned over that time. So a lot of folks think that our, the Alienware Alpha that we announced uh, two years ago or so and the Steam Machine, that this is all brand new and the first time that Alienware gets into this space, right. but it actually isn't. We were doing this, to your point, a long time ago, over a decade ago, and we learned a lot around thermal management, around noise management, around industrial design in a living room setting, around how to deliver uh, an experience that's going to be scalable for customers, right. right? just like products like this are going to be scalable, but in a form factor that's a little bit more inviting next to a television than maybe a huge tower like this may be. So yeah, I mean, we, we, we've learned a lot. We're still 100% committed to it, and we're going to show you a little bit more of our, our latest commitment to this category when we announce uh, the brand new Alienware Alpha. <laughs> All right, I'm take this. All right, guys, so. Can I open it? When we launched this, so you guys know I am constantly reaching out to our community, very active on Alienware Arena. Our Alienware Alpha owners are extremely, extremely passionate. Um, they were our very big early adopters uh, when we first announced this, uh, or first came out with it two years ago, as Frank has corrected me. Um, and the biggest question that I think anybody has seen from Alienware Alpha owners were, Graphics amplifier. When could I get graphics amplifier support? So, the picture probably steals the thunder. My setup probably steals the th steals the thunder. But uh, Frank, <laughs> when can I get graphics amplifier support with my Alienware Alpha? Tomorrow. <laughs> um, so awesome. Yeah, we we listen to everybody. We listen to the community. Um, we heard your feedback. We know this has been the most requested feature on the Alpha. Everything's upgradable on the Alpha except the motherboard, right? The, yep. the CPU's always been upgradable, the memory, the hard drive, heck, the Wi-Fi card has been upgradable since day one that we launched this product. But in order to get this amazing form factor, this thing is, uh, you know, it reminds us a lot of what an old Nintendo Wii was like in terms of size, but it's got yep. incredibly more performance. We had to make the graphics card on board the motherboard, so that kind of made it impossible to upgrade the graphics chip. Comes the Alienware Alpha, right? And that changes the whole game yep. now. But this is the first time we're able to offer compatibility with the graphics amplifier in this form factor. But that's not all you're going to get. I feel like a pitch sales <laughs> on there's, TV, there's right? Tons. But there's more. There's more. Tons of so the things. brand new Alpha gives you uh, the brand new uh, sixth generation Skylake processors from Intel. So you're going to get a CPU uh, yeah. upgrade. Um, we're supporting DDR4 memory as well. So you get a memory upgrade. Um, you're also going to be able to get it with a SSD drive and a hard drive combination. So oh, that was nice. the number one upgrade everybody was doing out there with the original yeah. Alpha was switching over to an SSD. So now you'll be able, you, you don't have to compromise on storage yeah. for the performance. You'll be able, you have an M.2 in here, you'll be able to go with SSD and storage and get the best of both worlds. Nice. But the biggest upgrade we made to this baby are the graphics that are inside of it. So you'll be able to get two options. You'll either get an AMD R9470XM graphics card. So that'll be uh, what the entry graphics card on this will be. It's a huge improvement over the current um, graphics we have in the Alpha. And if you want even more performance, we have a desktop GTX NVIDIA 960 in here wow. as well. I mean, you think about that, <laughs> that the size of that graphics yeah. card on, yeah. its, by its, on its own, that yeah. card is almost the entire size of this, uh, this little desktop. Wow. So if that's not enough for you, 
you can go and attach the alpha, or the, sorry, you can go and attach the amplifier. So I get the question all the time, well, why, if I, why would I buy this and then go buy this versus maybe buying a tower out there like the Aurora and just get everything built into one? Well, it's really a matter of what you can afford and when you can afford it and how you plan to use the product. Yep. Today, you know, this product is extremely affordable. I haven't even announced the price yet, but I will now. Um, we're going to start off at $599 on this product. Today, if you have $600 to spend, this is what's going to make the most sense for you. You'll be able to play all your games out there. Um, you'll be able, even able to play some of them in 4K. In the future, as you want to get to VR, we have a path for you to get to VR. If you want to get to 4K gaming, we've got a path for you to get to 4K 60 frames per second. And this is it right here. So today you save $600. Maybe you know, a year from now, you can get the Alienware graphics amplifier. It's $199. It's yep. the most affordable external graphics solution out there. We invented this entire category. Um, and then you can go slap in any graphics card you want. You can go put a 1070 if you want. You can put a 1080. This launch, the 1070 and the 1080 were compatible with the graphics amplifier the day that those graphics cards launched in the industry. Nice. You can go in there, you can put that. Maybe That's we'll awesome. be in even better graphics in that time frame a year yep. from now. You'll be able to slap that in there. And then when you're ready to go buy your VR headset, then you go spend another $600 or maybe there's something even better or a little bit more affordable. And you can plug it into this and you've got a path to VR. So Absolutely. the products, again, we want them to last with you for a long, long, long time. Yeah. We want you to scale. We want you to be able to upgrade everything. Everything is still fully upgradable inside the box. You can change out the CPU, the memory, the hard drive, all of that stuff if you want over time. So. This is uh, the new Alpha. We also have a Steam Machine version of it as yep. well. We remain committed to Steam Machine. It's, uh, it's done really, really well for us. It's really cool if you want something that's on your TV, never going to require a keyboard and mouse. It's just going to be an appliance, if you will, like a console is. Um, so that'll be av available in the, in, the new, uh, in the new Alpha, if you will, or the new Steam Machine configuration here. I know for me, um, this product is like, it's one of my favorites. Uh, we do a lot of traveling. You guys that follow us on Alienware TV, you know, we're constantly live streaming from remote locations. This is like the ideal uh, Alienware PC for me because all I've got to do is throw this in my bag, throw on my power adapter, my wired Xbox controller, mouse and keyboard. And then when I get to the hotel, it's like plug into their flat screen they got on the wall, got my controller, I'm ready to go in game. For those of you guys that are in college, if I had something like this in college, I'd be like, Yo, mom, I need a PC to do schoolwork. <laughs> However, I'm going to go up to, you know, Brandon's and Jeff's after the schoolwork is done. Just take this, connect to their TV, and we're ready to go. So, like, this talks back to, you know, our generation. I don't know if we could throw Eddie in that, but we'll, back to our generation. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. He's just when, a little older than us. When we were 80s Smith. kids and we would, like, go to our friend's house and play Nintendo, right? Like, this form factor, I could go throw in my bag and, like, ride my bike to my friend's house and we could game. Like, I, he doesn't have to have a system. Yeah, well, right. the other thing too that's awesome about it is you can connect this nowadays to uh, an HD TV monitor or, yep. or TV or a, or a monitor, either one, right? And it's a dual purpose device. You can yeah. run Windows on it, you can do your homework, you can go to uh, the internet, you can do everything a PC does with the Alpha. And then when friends come over, let's say, or you go to a friend's house, you fire up the HiveMind uh, user yep. interface, yep. which if you haven't seen what HiveMind is, guys, Check it out on our website. Yeah, Go look yeah. at the YouTube videos. There's nothing else out there like it. We created a 10-foot user interface for you that runs on top of Windows that allows you to play all your Steam games, all of them. Okay, it allows you to play Origin yeah. games. It allows you to play GOG. You can go to Hulu, Netflix. All, I mean, it's, it's basically like the ultimate gaming and entertainment media center all in one. So you fire that up, get three, four game pads, and now you've turned your single device into a console, console. experience. Yep. It's yep. dual yep. purpose. I mean, you do the math and you buy a PC and you buy a console, you're spending well over $1,000 to buy a good gaming PC and a good gaming console. Right. We're going to give that to you here in this product for less than 600 bucks. There's nothing else out there like yeah. it. It, it. It fits, man. It fits my lifestyle perfectly. <laughs> So we're going to turn it around just so you guys can see some of the ports while we continue talking here. But Eddie, you had even, something? Yeah, even the HDMI port was updated from a 1.3 to a 2.0. So if you're really looking for the latest and greatest technology from your ports perspective, just understand we upgraded almost everything except the external ID, but it's, it's a hell of a system. Yeah, the internals are completely different. It just, yeah. It's the same exact size as the, uh, the original Alpha and Steam yeah. machine, but everything on the inside has yeah. been uh, completely important. revamped. And, and if you're tapped out on HDMI ports on your TV, we got you guys covered because we're introducing a product into your living room. We're going to give you that port back. It's got HDMI in, so you can run whether it's a console or your or your set-top box. Run it in through here, and everything's good to go. So 
where you add a product without having to find a port for it. Pretty badass, pretty mm -hmm. badass. For so sure. uh, we do have a couple of more announcements for you guys. And wait, there's um, more. There's more, <laughs> there's always more. Um, so over the last couple of weeks, if you've been tuned into Alienware TV, you saw that we brought in our partners, our great partners, Intel and NVIDIA. They've had some big product uh, launches over the last couple of weeks. Gentlemen, are those gonna be coming to our existing product line? I don't know what you're talking about. What, <laughs> what? big major? <laughs> some no, graphics no. cards or some something? Graphics big stuff, maybe, big stuff. Maybe some CPUs that do more than... Real high-end stuff. 16 things at a time. More than that. Like 20, <laughs> 20 million things at a time. So uh, our Intel Broadwell E uh, support and uh, NVIDIA GTX 1080 1000 series support. When is that coming to our existing Area 51 product line? We'll also have them tomorrow. So we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll offer the Broadwell E-Class processors. That'll be the first time we have a 10-core processor in a system. Wow. That's with 20 virtual threads yeah. total. So think of the, all the things you could do. In fact, um, you know, we used to talk about multitasking. You know, we used to have single-thread processors, and people could run a program at a time. I remember having Windows 3.1 long, yeah. long back in the day. Um, suddenly yeah, multitasking was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> now they're talking about mega tasking. So imagine uh, experiencing a 4K game while streaming at the same time. And you can do that with these 20 core, virtual 20 core processors. Yeah. The new Broadwell Eprox also introduced Intel's new Turbo Boost 3.0 technology, which is an incredible um, add to, the, to that processor family. And the way that works is it's a, it's a technology that will actually look at all your cores and wherever the workload is, uh, is being focused, it'll prioritize those cores to give you the best experience, the best performance of that application as possible. So incredible performance. Yeah. Um, it'll be the new highest end processor we have in the lineup. And yeah, so, so think about a product like this, Area 51 with its 10 core processor as, if you're doing a lot of streaming, if you're doing a lot of uh, encoding, uh, whether you're maybe recording VR sessions yeah. and, uh, and you want to do you know, it's hard to, to do VR and encode at the same time because VR kind of consumes the majority of your system in, yep. by itself. Um, if you're do, downloading some stuff in the background, uploading stuff in the back, it's really around, you know, we, when we originally came out with all these multi-cores, there was kind of this question, well, you know, almost every game is dual core. What's going to really use four or more? Yeah. And then quad-core processors came out. We've seen a couple games, and that's grown a little bit to be right. quad-core optimized. But what's 10-core optimized? It's really not around 10-core optimization. It's around running that quad-core optimized game and then being, going, being able to use the rest of the six cores to go do everything else yeah. without constraining and without bottlenecking that CPU. Yeah, and, and there's proof out there, guys. We have done it uh, on our own YouTube channel. Uh, as well as we've had Intel on to show the power of this. It, it's amazing. Umar put out a video where he was playing uh, Total War, uh, Warhammer. He was rendering a video and he was streaming all at the same time. And who knows what else he was doing <laughs> right. in the background. It's yeah. Umar, you never right. know what else he was doing. And literally it was amazing. The game was lag free. And if you've ever played Total War, Warhammer, it's like there's so much uh, physics going on uh, that your CPU is just like bottlenecked like crazy with that game. It, it, it's, it's amazing, the, the, the power of Broadwell E. Uh, it, it's fantastic. So, so we'll have six core flavors of it, okay. eight core, and then we'll got the, we have the 10 core as well, so. Nice. Yeah. That's the X, has the, has the X at the end instead of the oh, K yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the 10 core. Extreme, awesome. <laughs> extreme edition lives. Because X is always so important. <laughs> better it's better than yeah. K, yeah. so. We got to make Z like relevant. Can Z get some love? It's at the end of the alphabet. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't name it Ultra because everything Ultra, just, right? everything's just called Ultra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. That's true. Uh, so we have one more, one more announcement we want to bring to you guys. Uh, this is something that we we showed very early on this year. I believe CES was the first time we you showed it. You got the date correct, yes. Uh, awesome. You got one correct, yeah. <laughs> and we followed up showing it at PAX South, and I remember that because I was there at that event, San Antonio, Texas. Yes, Texas, a little love. From the Miami guys, no, no Texas. No. I like Texas. I love Texas. Right. Yeah, right. Texas is awesome. <laughs> Austin, man. Uh, I'll be there in six days. <laughs> so uh, our Alienware 13, you guys have seen it with OLED support. When when will our our our, our great community members uh, get an opportunity to show us some uh, some love with uh, Alien? Or when will they be able to get their hands on Alienware 13 and OLED? That'll also be available tomorrow, and it's actually incredible. Um, you know, as far as OLED's concerned, you know, people talk about, oh yeah, the new, the new technology on their display. 
If you've ever heard about contrast ratios, contrast ratios are essentially how many shades of gray you have between white and black. Well, the new OLED panel has a 100,000 to one uh, contrast ratio. So when you're playing a game, watching a movie, or even looking at a high definition film that has deep blacks, um, it'll look incredibly dark. In fact, sometimes you know, people say that it looks like the, the edge of the panel to the bezel of the system is almost seamless because yeah. of how, how dark that black could get. Yeah, it's a, it's a benefit of the OLED technology. Um, you get true black, true, okay. true black. Um, when you do LCD, you have to backlight. Um, so you're always going to kind of get this like white bleed. If you look at your TV or your monitors today, um, they go to a black, but you can still see some of the light coming through it. And they've done things to improve that, like some folks are putting uh, white LEDs behind the LCD instead of edge lighting it, and it helps compensate for that. Right. But OLED's really cool because every single pixel, basically, every single OLED itself is turned on or off completely okay. um, instead of having to backlight it. Yeah. So like what Eddie's saying is the border around the LCD and the display get lost when there's a black image. Yeah. It's like, it's just re awesome. remarkable. And it's, it's kind of like the Aurora in that you have to hear it to believe it. OLED, you're going to have to see it to yeah. believe it. It's even hard to show you because when you look at it on a picture on your LCD monitor, you're like, I don't really see that big of a difference. It's because yeah. you're looking at it right. through an LCD. Right. Yeah, yeah. You have to see it in you person. See it to it. <clears throat> yeah. But what I'm really proud of about this product is, you know, if you go out there and you try and buy an OLED uh, desktop monitor or you go and buy an OLED TV, they're like 2x the price of what an LCD a monitor or an LCD TV costs out there. Yeah. And we have come in with some amazing pricing on the new Alienware 13. You'll be able to get it with an OLED screen for just $12.99. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's nice. just unheard of. It's, yeah. it's remarkable. Yeah. Wow. I, so uh, some of the other things we, we, we've talked about are eSports guys, right? So we've got uh, Perfect Legend. I'll name drop them. Perfect Legend, I know you're watching. Uh, big uh, Mortal Kombat fighter, right? He needs fast response time monitors, right? I know when he's going to gaming competitions and when he's practicing, he's always hitting me up and he's like, Leonard, so... Uh, I'm going to need something with super fast response time. What do you have for me uh, that's going to keep me in the game and keep me competitive, right? So OLED technology provides that, right? That's the biggest, uh, I think, advantage beyond the contrast ratios and the deep blacks that we were talking about. There is no other, there's no LCD on the market, okay, in a notebook that gets the response time that we get with OLED. With this OLED panel, we give you sub two millisecond response time. Wow. Very <laughs> few, if any, desktop panels get to that performance right. level. Yeah. Yeah. So when you see it, again, it's like one of those things like, how did I ever live without this yeah. performance? And then you look at an LCD and you'll never look at it the same. It's just so inferior Changed once forever. you see it. Yeah, once because it. the sharpness and the ghosting that we've been um, dealing with for all these years is gone. And the sharpness is just incredible of this picture. And it looks like a photo. It right. looks like a photo that's moving across the screen, like nothing you've ever seen before. Um, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, I can tell you that every single notebook that I get moving forward is going to be an OLED, <laughs> OLED. notebook. Um, so we're really excited. Nice. It's finally going to be available. And I want to say, you know, when we showed this off at CES, we asked you guys to please give us feedback. Is this something you're interested in? Is this something that you want to see come into the portfolio? And we got an overwhelming amount of enthusiasm for it. And that's why we're finally here today is because you guys supported it. You really wanted to see it. And here we are. We're launching it finally tomorrow. Very cool, very cool. So uh, this is the kickoff of our E3 coverage. We brought you guys four new Alienware technologies. Uh, those of you guys that have the existing products, when you're gonna be able to uh, get support and upgrades. Uh, Frank dropped some, some knowledge on you guys that have graphics amplifiers and have been asking that question about 1080. Can I get a 1080 in there? Yes, you can. Finally. Go and get your 1080s, <laughs> find them out there. Ooh. We have uh, a whole lot of new technologies coming uh, online tomorrow, but we aren't even done here today on Alienware TV. We have a launch party, right? We're in this venue right now. Uh, things are getting prepped and set. We're gonna let you guys get a little sneak peek uh, after this uh, telecast a little bit later. You guys get to see this room coming together for a, uh, our launch party. We have a laundry list, a huge list of gaming celebrities, actors, actresses, uh, NFL players, all kinds of people. Follow me on Twitter. I'm going to plug my Twitter here. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. I may be name dropping some of your favorites uh, pretty soon. But uh, we will be live later at 8 p.m. 
uh, Pacific, live streaming here from our launch party, as well as tomorrow we kick off with live E3 coverage. We will be live streaming from the booth. We have awesome Twitch streamers coming by. Those guys I will name drop right now. We're gonna have Swifter stopping by, Dan's Gaming, Duck Sauce. We have Team Liquid, I Will Dominate dropping by, and many more surprises you guys are gonna have to tune in to see. Uh, you're gonna get to check them out with our Alienware Aurora VR, our Alienware Alpha graphics amplifier, our Area 51 with those 10 cores of Broadwell E, GTX 1080, it's amazing. But before we go away, I'm gonna put these guys on the spot. What are you guys looking forward to at E3? Like, what, 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 what's gonna be happening? What? The games, man. <laughs> the game, it's always the about games. the games, right? It's always about the games. I'm looking forward to E3 Live. You yeah. know, um, the truck's gonna be out there. Uh, the Alienware truck's gonna be out there. It's gonna be a really cool, um, it's the first time I think we do it, right, as an industry, so yep. that should be really cool. I, I love the idea of finally getting more of the public, non-industry people involved in E3. It's yeah. one of the yeah. reasons we love PAX and we do so much at PAX That's is very true. being able to connect with our fans and our customers. So I'm really, really excited about that. And then just VR, man, we've got some awesome VR we'll demos do. we're doing tonight at the party. Um, and who knows what we're going to see, you know, things that have yet to be announced that we'll probably see over the next three days. Yeah. So really excited about that as well. Awesome. Well, for Frank, for Eddie, for myself, thank you guys for tuning in to our announcements. And we will see you later this evening live here on Alienware TV and broadcasted on twitch.tv slash Alienware. If you guys have any questions, you know where we are. We live broadcast four days a week. You can find us at any time. Hit me up on Twitter. I'll be there very, very soon. Thank you, guys.